Hi, this is Johnny PNC, and today we're going to talk about anti-pump logic in uh, circuit breakers, high voltage circuit breakers. There's one on the screen right now, that's a 138 kV SF6 uh, circuit breaker, and that would definitely have anti-pump logic in it. So let's take a look at the basic logic in a circuit breaker control system. Um, so we're looking at this here. Right now it's showing in the green or open position. Uh, let's review the major systems. And so here is we can give it a manual close and that would come through a, a local control center or a mimic board or an umbilical cord. Uh, we have auto reclosing which would happen after a fault. We have SCADA closing which would come from the control center. Note the control center or this remote closing would could be disabled and uh, we do that to pr protect people who are working on stuff to not have a misoperation when they're working on things from a remote source. Um, 89Bs are from a lockout relay. Lockout relays are tripped because of bus or transformer faults or breaker failures. So if they operate, we do not want to close. So we'll interlock the close with that. The anti-pump logic's right there. We're gonna get more into that later. Um, note, if you don't have anti-pump logic, you could possibly close into a fault and then you could keep closing into it. And we'll talk a little bit more about that later. You have your trip logic over there. And again, it's protective trips, skata trips, and manual trips, and the 43 to protect uh, skata trips. Note the protective trips, that's kind of like the Thevenin equivalent of protective trips. There could be lots of things tripping that, any of your lockout relays, any of your distance relays, or overcurrent relays, whatever. We have a red and green light. Green is lit when it's open. Red is lit when it's closed. Uh, we have a closed coil and a trip coil. Note that the newer breakers would have two trip coils for high voltage lines. Um, this is our contact logic for a circuit breaker. Uh, 52A follows the breaker. 52B does the opposite of the breaker. And then later on my diagrams, if they're in their opposite state, I have them highlighted like that. Aux coils like this case, a 52Y, are shown in the de-energized state. And then when you put current through them or voltage across the coil, they change states. And again, I'll have them highlighted like that. So let's go through a manual close. First, we close the uh, circuit breaker with a mimic board control. And so that creates a path here through our 89B. We don't have a lockout relay and we pick up the 52X. Um, once we pick up that 52X, it's 52X context change state. This one right here will uh, energize the closed coil and this one right here will lock in the 52X, seal it in. Once the closed coil has been energized, it changes states. Uh, that's gonna have the 52As all closed and the 52Bs open. It shuts off the green light, turns on the red light, uh, and it then is going to ultimately pick up that 52Y. Uh, note here that the red light also serves as a trip coil monitor because there's a little bit of current that flows through that, not enough to trip it. So don't think that that trip coil is being energized because that's a high impedance. So we got a little trickle current going through there and we can use that as a trip coil monitor. The problem is you only get to use it as a trip coil monitor when you're looking at it. So modern schemes will use a input to a relay. Tip, we usually have it on a 351 or a 451. Uh, where we're checking through the trip coil through that and it's continuously monitored. So it'll alarm even if you're not there. So uh, the 52Y now gets picked up, energizing that. And when it picks up, it changes state for its contacts. And that will then take power off or a current through the 52X contact. And, but importantly, the 52Y seals itself in. So now what happens is we have the 52Y is sealed in through the parallel combination of the 52A and the 52Y. So when this encloses, it seals itself in and that prevents you from energizing that 52X. Um, so again, the seal in the 52Y coil through the manual closed contact, as I just showed you, the parallel combination. Now, what's nice about that is if the 52A were having to open again, i.e. you closed into a fault and it tripped out, uh, nothing will happen. So, oh snap, we forgot to take the grounds off. Close into a fault, breaker trips open. 
So the breaker opens, but you still have your hand on the closed coil. And so everything is good. Um, and it, you won't let you do a, a, it won't let a close, another close happen, even though the breaker chain stays. Now again, if you didn't have this 52Y in there, that thing would come through and this would be, you would just come right back in and hit that 52X or if you didn't have an anti pump logic, you'd just hit the close coil. So now you remove the grounds, you remove the grounds, inspect for damage, and then uh, complete your condition report and close the circuit breaker again. Now let's look at some uh, troubling areas. So maybe what you decided to do was instead of run a B contact over here to the manual close, you put a 68B. And what happens is you take a 68, which is just an aux coil, you pick it up off the trip bus, and anytime the trip bus picks up, you then block any, uh, you're gonna block any closes here. Now the problem with that would be if this 68 gets picked up momentarily and then you trip back into it or it get, could get picked up and, and trip back out for, from a protective relay that could break this manual closed circuit and and um, and null your sealing circuit and then cause you to reclose. So to protect against that you have to make sure that the 68 is only picked up from latching relays like lockouts and any non-latching like your manual trips or any protective trips that are like from a relay will need to be blocked through a diode. And because if you don't do that, that could be pulsed and it could defeat the anti-pump logic. In a similar fashion, the uh, SCADA close and the manual close with a sync check. And if the SCADA close has a sync check in it, you have to watch out for that. Sometimes I've seen it where we've had sync checks that would pulse if you close into a fault. They release the sync contact and again it defeats the anti-pump. So you have to be careful of that. Well thank you. Hopefully this has been informative and we'll talk to you later. This is Johnny PNC saying have a great day.